In my earlier video, I explained about how I've created a MicroPython library allowing me to control a DF player, mini MP3 player with a Raspberry Pi Pico. In this update, I've made some changes to the library, tested it with the Raspberry Pi Pico 2W, and created a demonstration program showing how you can use the Pico 2W as a web server to control the MP3 player. I'll start by apologizing for my croaky voice today. I'm recovering from a seasonal cold and my voice hasn't quite recovered. Anyway, I've split this video into a few chapters. First, I'll give a quick introduction to the DF Robot DF Player Mini, in case you haven't seen my previous video. Then, update on the changes I've made to the MicroPython library. An introduction to the new Raspberry Pi Pico 2W. I've also simplified the circuit diagram, which I'll cover during that chapter. Then an explanation about the web server running on the Pico 2W and how I created some code to create dynamic SVG images as part of the web interface. So this is the DF Robot DF Player Mini, an MP3 player mounted on a PCB, which is just a little bigger than the micro SD card holder that it uses. I've covered it in more details in my earlier video, but the important thing is that it can be controlled using a serial UART connection, which means it can be controlled with a microcontroller. DF Robot provide a library for use with an Arduino, but I've created my own version of the library written in MicroPython so that it can be used on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is the MicroPython library and designed specifically for the Raspberry Pi Pico, and this is available on GitHub. Unfortunately, the documentation wasn't particularly good when I was trying to create this. My first attempt, based on a combination of reading the code, reading the basic data sheet they provided, and bit of reverse engineering appeared to work, but I had made some incorrect assumptions. In particular, I thought that each command sent to the player resulted in a single response. But I now realize that where the player needs to send information back, then it sends that as a second response. So I've updated the code to support that. I've also tweaked the library, shortened the wait time without reducing reliability, which is good for when trying to interact with the player multiple times in succession such as sending multiple requests to lower the volume. If you've missed the announcement, Raspberry Pi have released a new microcontroller board, the Raspberry Pi Pico 2W. It's based around the RP2350 microcontroller used in the Pico 2, but it adds wireless networking. So you get the performance benefits of the Pico 2, along with the optional RISC-V instruction set and the extra security. Also with the benefits of being able to connect a Wi-Fi network and Bluetooth version 5.2. Slightly more expensive than the earlier models, but only 10% extra on top of the Pico W, and it's cheaper than some other microcontrollers. With this project, you should be able to use the Pico W, as I'm not really making use of the new features of the Pico 2, but this is a nice board for future projects. Here is a representation of the breadboard design. This is simplified from my earlier diagram that I no longer have the external buttons. There's just a single pair of wires from the two GPIO pins on the Pico going to the UART pins of the DF Player Mini. As you can see, this now fits on a single breadboard and wiring it up is easy. The only difficult part was adding solid core wire to the speaker, as the one I used is designed for use in a model railway train and has really thin wires. You can use other speakers though. Now, the DF Player Mini is a mono, so you can only get a mono output. I've ordered the DF Play and Pro, which has onboard storage and stereo output. So I'll take a look at that in future. If you want the output louder, then there's also a digital to analog output, which could be connected to an amplifier instead. I've now implemented a web server on the Pico, which allows it to be controlled through a web interface. The web server code is based on an early project I created for a model railway point controller, and which in turn is based on the code from the Raspberry Pi and MicroPython documentation. The web server is around 200 lines of code, which includes calls to the DF Player library, although not including the library itself. Then almost the same amount of code for interpreting the URL string and validating the requests. Note that although I do validate the inputs, there's no authentication included in this, and the only way of limiting access to the player is through the Wi-Fi password. One feature I've included is that some of the images are created dynamically by manipulating the SVG file. So if you look at this screenshot, you'll see that I've labeled the first two tracks as voice tracks, the third as music, and the fourth doesn't have any title at all. These are generated on the web server itself and included within the image. 
This means I can put any title name and actually embed it inside the image dynamically. There are other ways of achieving this using CSS, etc. But doing this way, I didn't need to worry about what fonts were available to the web browser or if the browser would resize the text differently and it would look out of place. There are some disadvantages to this as well, and I'll perhaps look at that in more detail in a future video. But I thought it'd be interesting to try a proof of concept, if nothing else. I'll finish by playing some sample music through the player. Now, this is a very low quality speaker, which is really designed to be in contact with the proper surface when it's mounted inside a model. The music is called Win the Battle, Win the War by Everett Armand, which is available from the YouTube Studio Music. Please subscribe if you're interested in future developments, as I do intend to try other models of the MP3 player, including the Pro version, and to see how the quality compares on that. Thanks for watching.